Welcome to Feminine Power Time. Turn off the chatter and tune in to what matters. This is Christine Arilo, your host, and here is where we reimagine the way we in the world work from the inside out. And we do that by marrying well-being and wisdom and leadership, our personal leadership, our family leadership, our world leadership, just by being the truly aligned human that we are through our voices and our choices and the presence that we show up in. Do you know that we had that much power? (laughs) We do. We do. And we also need to make sure that we are deeply, deeply, deeply really tuning in to look at where we might be imbalanced and where we might be imbalanced in how much mind share and time and resources and energy and care that we're giving to a project to certain people in our lives, to our purpose or our passion, it's so easy to get out of balance or become imbalanced. The way I like to think of it is that it's like we are like banks who are programmed to give more withdrawals than take in deposits. And you don't have to be, you know, a brain scientist or an MBA or an econo- economist to know that, you know, if you keep giving and you don't, you're not receiving more than you're giving, you will eventually go bankrupt emotionally, mentally, physically spiritually, relationally, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we practice cyclical living here, the feminine wisdom way in, and actually in everything I do, whether it's how we do, it's just how, how wise people, <laughs> wise people live their lives. It's ancient wisdom that I don't know if they've, they've, they've scientifically validated it yet. I, I always kind of chuckle, um, you know, there's there's a, a deep value in modern science, and it makes me chuckle when these studies come out and th- and they're saying something that's so like like common sense, and you're like, yeah, of course that's how the world works, um, and they act like they've you know they're Columbus who says he's discovered <laughs> America, but you know whatever, it's you know it's good also to have people validating things, but and if we give our power away to others to to have to have a scientific study that this is how what, what is real then we're not l- learning and how to actually trust our own barometer and in this banana pants world you know with a lots of false information and crazy you know people saying crazy things um, it's good to have an internal barometer so you can feel what is true and what is not true and not get swept into the swirl And so today what we're doing, and in this series, this is the second in the three-part series, is specifically about really supporting you to stay centered in yourself, in your health, in your well-being, in your clarity, so that as you go into this year, you you're really you you can make wise decisions and you're not going to deplete yourself by overgiving in this case this podcast specifically we're focusing on overgiving last time we talked about over self-reliance and next time we'll talk about over responsibility these are different overs that I identified when I was doing my research like what is underneath the roots of this burnout overwhelm self-sacrifice you know, people telling us you should be able to thrive, but, you know, so many people are barely surviving. And it's not just about money. It's about like, you know, I know people who make a lot of money and they're just holding on emotionally and energetically and in their own vitality. So this is not a it's not a class thing. It's not a um, money thing, although money, you know, 100% helps. But sometimes we think, oh, if I just had all the money in the world, then it would all it would all work out. And that isn't really how it how it works, because these deficits that we create for ourselves, they'll show up somewhere. You know, it's like it might show up in your money, it might show up in your health, it might show up in your relationships where you feel like you're the one who's always giving, always reaching out, always showing up and not receiving that in return. Or maybe it shows up in your business relationships or at work where you're always the one who's pitching in and filling the gap and advocating for others, but you're not receiving, you seem to be giving a lot. It might show up in your family system where you're the one who, you know, gathers the people and, you know, does all the things, shows up for people when they need, you know, when they need something to the detriment of your health and your dreams and 
you know, it, it can show up in so many places. Even I notice for myself when I'm over giving my energy to projects and to people and to my purpose, it does show up in my bank account. It shows up in, you know, a, it has to show up somewhere. And this is just the rules of the universe is that when you're over giving in some place, you're under receiving at another place. And eventually, if you don't write the imbalance, it will bite you in the butt. <laughs> will bite you in the butt and it will be bad news bears. For those of you who remember the bad news bears, it's not bueno. These are lots of bees today. Um, and so, so this is why we practice cyclical living, cyclical strategic planning and how we look at our projects, how we, how we look at what we're going to give our life force to in the coming next half of year. I just have been spending this last couple of weeks with some of the teams I work with focusing on where they're going to put their their life force and energy and prioritizing projects between now and September. So we kind of do a six month March to September. And I do the same thing for myself and my own and my own work in the world. And some things, you know, are going to get less energy and they're going to go on maintenance mode. Some relationships might even go on maintenance mode. I've been doing this myself of just looking at some relationships where, you know, and I just took a, a trip to the beach Noah said we ran away from home um, for the day because I was like, I need to fill my spirit. My spirit is withering. Um, even though I love what I do, I have to be really careful that I don't overgive and overgive to my passion and overgive to others. So we took a 24 hour trip, four hours one way, four hours the back, and overnight. And on the way there, Noah and I get lots of things done in the car. And so we were talking about different things of that you know have worked in the past and have not worked in the past and one of the things that came up for me is I, I listed out some relationships that I've noticed that I am the one in those relationships and they're all really spectacular humans but I'm the one who always reaches out I'm the one who who even if I collaborate with that person I or I I you know I connect with that person. I often don't feel like I've received. Do you know? Have you ever had that experience where you've just spent an hour or two hours on the phone with somebody and you're like, that was just all about them, or you've you know you've done a collaboration or a project or planned something with somebody, and then it's like you find that you even have you've given you've given more, or it just wasn't worth your time and energy. So these are these are some of the things that we want to. We always pause. This is. I'm taping this live at the March equinox. The equinoxes are the normal rebalancing point. So why we do the cyclical living and strategic planning, whether it's for our business, our teams, our families, ourselves, is because then we can spot the imbalances before they become drama or before they become disease and or before they become distress. And those are all things that will happen if we don't notice the balances and rebalance first, just like your bank account, right? If you don't notice that you, you know, your bank account's below a hundred dollars, and then you know all of a sudden you're overdrawing because you didn't even realize that there wasn't enough money in there, you gotta you have to tend to these things. You want to pay attention. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna share with you some of the common signs of overgiving. I'm gonna share with you also some of the roots of where it's at. And then I'm going to share some ways to reset the equation. For those of you that have the Overwhelmed and Over It book, you'll want to um, grab that. It's in refer to chapter six and or you know take a read through chapter six. One of the great things about the Overwhelmed and Over It book, the way it kind of came through me is you don't have to read it front to cover. We kind of can focus on different categories at different times and it never gets old. You know, there's the inquiries and the wisdom that are in there. They're always good to reconnect with on a, on a yearly basis to make sure we stay in balance. Not imbalance, but imbalance. So how does that sound to you all? Okay. So what I want you to do is we kind of dive to we deepen in here is to as we go through this inquiry of like where might I be overgiving? Where might I be overgiving to my projects, to a project, to um, people, certain people, groups of people, even sometimes they're individuals, sometimes they're groups. Where might I be overgiving to my work, to your, to your purpose? And even a passion, you know, can be like that, that you have. There are lots of P's, right? Projects, people, passions, and purpose. 
I see this a lot with people who are heart centered, purpose driven people. Like, oh my gosh, we have a that it's just like a crisis, just you know, waiting to explode. Of you know, we want to do it in the world, and yet we can't do it at the sacrifice of our own well being, or we'll create a culture that continues to operate that way. And we'll hand that off to the generations to come. And I'm not sure the planet, um, well, the planet will survive. I'm not sure that she's going to let the humans survive on it. So let's do our part, shall we? By really helping get that receiving and giving into balance for you. So I'm going to just read this one piece of wisdom, the wisdom bite, wisdom pearl, that will help us kind of set the context And if you want to just kind of slow down and take a breath with me, this is on page 134 in Overwhelmed and Over It. And just call yourself back to yourself right now, even if you're moving around. Just really bring all of your presence and attentions back to yourself and make the space with us really for you. Like I'm going to put my wise person goggles on and take a look around my life right now with some honesty, and so I can have some clarity, and I can make even micro shifts that will have a significant difference. Often we think that we have to make big, huge life shifts, which sometimes we do, but even those, when, when made the best, shouldn't have to be like hard right turns or hard left turns. Sometimes because we don't do these check-ins, it happens, but really it should be more like like a turn, you know, a turn, like if you're on a motorcycle and you're like, you know, like going down or up a mountain and it's just like, you know, you're, you're cugging in the turn and all of a sudden you're like moving in a different direction. That's what we're after here. Okay. If you can reveal the specific ways you overgive, you become empowered to shift the imbalance. We can reveal the specific ways you overgive. You become empowered to shift the imbalance. And as we go through this today, I'm just getting a sense that there might be some of you out there who, um, who have an, an influence over other people in your lives, perhaps someone younger, a daughter, someone that works with you, a, a niece, uh, a nephew. And just get the sense um, in the last podcast, uh, questionnaire I did many people ask well how can we help the younger generation or how can we you know help young girls and young women and adults is one of the things that I hope to give you here as we're in these and you know exploring all these different things is language and metaphor and so you know as you go through this always have to start with yourself first so don't just be like oh I really want to talk to this person about that but if there is a person who comes into your awareness that you might want to you know, pose that question to, of like where might you be overgiving here and under receiving? That's the power of really being an advocate for someone. And instead of telling people what to do, we provide them with inquiries that help them see things that they can't see and then find their, their way and give them permission to really do that for themselves. So if there's a person who pops it, let's build that they'll be invited in today too. All right, so let's dive into some of these signs that you are giving more withdrawals than deposits and blindly bankrupting yourself. And we'll do this in service of helping, you know, really starting the illumination process because if you can't see how you're overgiving and under receiving, you just can't help to drive yourself into a deficit. And unfortunately, because we've been doing this so long for so many generations, we have been doing this within our lives and our families and our organizations for so long that today we just accept this as a totally normal way to operate and work and be in relationship. Now, the good news is because of 2020 and the great wake up and shake up, it's shifting some, which is good. And we want to keep that momentum going. So here are three ways that kind of I call them bankrupt scenarios. And again, you may have done this before, but but even I, who wrote the book right, on this and who practiced this, like I need to stop and pause and do this because it really helps and supports me to make decisions that I might not want to make because of whatever fear is lurking under there or whatever thing, something matters to me. So 
really be open to this because if you can open yourself up and let go of any, I like to, I always say, I have sometimes I can have a little bit of a spiritual or personal development ego of like, well, I've already done that. Well, I've already done that. And that's usually when the universe is like, well, that's really not how it works, Christine. So I encourage you all to just open up, be curious and let your deeper wisdom. And um, I always say, let the, the, let the divine show you what you can't see. Okay. Scenario number one. And just as I go through these, see and kind of feel into again, projects, people, purpose, passion, work. Number one, you give more than is needed. So where might you be giving more than is needed? Where you might be giving 110% to a project or to a relationship or to a person or to a a passion or purpose when 80% would be enough. You've given like hours and hours of time and mental space to a person or a project. But if you look back right now, either it wasn't worth it and or it's time for a shift because that extra percentage of the life force and the money and the mind space and the time that it takes, um, it's not in alignment anymore. And this is like one of the other great things that's, that's really awesome about cyclical living is that it doesn't make what you've been doing wrong. So as we look at this area of like, wow, where, where might I have been giving more than was actually needed? And, and I gave 110% where 80% was, was enough. And now that 30%, you know, I could have used it for you know, my own self-care, my own well-being. Or even like, that's just what it took, you know, for the last quarter. So this is why we pause every quarter and do the power pauses because then it's like, oh, okay, that was okay for that quarter. That was okay for that year, but it's not, it's not in alignment. It's not in harmony moving forward. And so just looking at that and noticing sometimes one of the signs can be you're giving more than that's needed is that you're, you can sense that there's, there's other things that are calling for your attention, other things that are wanting your attention, but you feel like you can't do it because your energy is over there in this other space and you just don't have it to give um, without you know, burning yourself out or over, overstretching and overextending, which we're going to talk about um, next. Okay, number two, where might you be giving more than is in harmony? Where might you be giving more than is in harmony? So what this is about is this is where the exchange of energy and time and money between you and another person, between you and the organization you work for or with, or even between you and your mission or your family is imbalanced and not in your favor. And so if it happens in relationships, and it can happen with relationship to organizations or people, you, eventually you get resentful. And what happens is, is that you don't get what you need because you gave too much for what you received in the exchange. So the, the exchange is off. So like the first one, you give more than it is needed. It's like you're, like it didn't really require all the energy you gave and no one asked for that. Um, and, or even if they, they did, it wasn't really needed to meet the goal or meet what was actually real. But for this one, this is about the exchange where you're giving more than is in harmony to give. So think about harmony. Harmony is where it's it's like never like a 50-50 exchange. 50-50 is not how the world works. I mean, sometimes we're going to, we are going to give more and receive less or we're going to receive differently. And and so, but you can feel where that that disharmony is because the exchange is off. So just kind of sense into that for a moment. It's like, where might the exchange be off? like how much you're giving to a project. Like for me, like I can, I can, this can happen to me a lot because I, I, I can always kind of see what's actually needed. And it isn't that it isn't needed because it is needed, but the money. So for example, like when I'm doing my work with teams or corporations or doing leadership coaching and there's like, you know, an endless amount of things that I could do, but the money exchange and also there's energy exchange as well. Not everything is money. There's also energy things and things that I, I'm able to kind of test within the, the, and, you know, I get benefit from, but when that exchange goes off because I'm over giving because it's for me, the way that my personality works, it'll be like, but it's for the highest good. 
but it's for the highest good. And some, for some of you, it might be more like the, well, but it's needed and you know, they, people really need this. And so just depending on how our, or it's the right thing to do, right? And so we all have these different personality types, which is why I love working with the Enneagram. Stay tuned for more on that to come this summer and fall. Um, some, some diving into that for those of you that are interested in understanding more about your personality and how it's structured. There are all these deeper parts in there that we don't even see. It's just like, well, of course, that's how we're going to operate. But then we end up screwing ourselves over and we're giving too much and not receiving in return. And eventually it always ends in resentment or depletion. I see this, you know, a lot also in um, some of the of the people I work with who usually are at like an executive level or they're they're kind of at a rising leadership level and they they're like they're giving so much energy to their company and to the work and they kind of keep getting dangled well if you do this then you'll be promoted and if you do this you'll you know whatever and they just want to continue to excel and and accelerate but then it doesn't happen. You know, they've given all of this energy, all of this life force, and and usually it doesn't happen, not the way that is really in exchange. And even if it does, it's not enough. And so this is also this piece of taking a stand for yourself of like, just notice that. Like, you know, even if it's a person in your family who you really love and or a friend, it's just the exchange is off. So you, so as we'll get, you know, where we go with this eventually is we have to reset the exchange. It's not kind of like, well, screw you. Like I'm, I'm out of here. Um, when I'm working with people in career transition, we oftentimes figure out that they're in a transition job and that transition job means they can, you know, they can re- they don't have to put 150% in. They can, they can give an exchange that feels harmonious of time and mind share and care in all of those things. So take a breath and just imagine for a moment, like if all of the parts, people, places, projects, et cetera, that they, they were in harmony and that was your goal. Like I'm taking a stand to get all of these things into a harmonious giving and receiving. What would be one or two that you could identify right now? You know what? That's, that's not in harmony. That exchange, it's off somehow. And what might be one action you could take to reset that equation? What would be one action you could take to just reset that equation or a choice that you could make to do something differently? Something you could stop doing. Something you could start doing. Something that you could shift. So it's always like stop, start, shift. So as we're looking at these, that's the practice. You know, do I stop this? Do I start something different? Do I shift this? And it's wise to do this in relationship and to, with your projects. So just kind of feeling into that. Okay, the last one. Where might you be giving more than you can afford? This is such a powerful one. This is where you want to be generous. You want to help. You want to pitch in. But in truth, you don't have the time or the money or the energy to give. And rather than just being honest to give what you can afford, you overgive of the resources and the life force that you truthfully need to retain for yourself. So yes, you've managed not to disappoint another, but what about you? When this one is working within us, you betray yourself for the help of seeking, of of, of the help of the sake of helping another. And we tend to show up this way in our relationships and in our work, not because we're like sadists, right? (laughs) Who want to create suffering for ourselves, but without the language of articulating it, how we are overgiving our reality, it just feels like one big overwhelming swirl. And this one, particularly with the generosity piece and the, the you know, being a team player or you know, filling the gap, for a lot of us, any of you out there who are like, yeah, I do, I see the gap, I fill it. And that's not bad to like, if you have extra resources of time, energy, care, et cetera, that you, know, you can stretch a little bit. 
It's the overstretching and the overextending and the overgiving to the gap that can end up really having a negative impact on you. And then you're not really helping anyone because if there is all these gaps, then sometimes it's just not yours to fill. And or if you overextend to the point where it's creating financial or health or relational or emotional strain on you, that's just maybe not yours to do then. And we'll talk about that next week and over responsibility. So for example, a friend of mine, um, her sister went through a divorce and she needed help financially. And so my friend put that her friend's divorce she didn't have the money, all the money to lend her. So she put it on credit cards to support her sister. And her sister never really paid her back. So my friend was now stuck in credit card debt because she, you know, like as they, they say in the South, God bless her heart, you know, was wanting to be generous. But because she plugged the hole that way, the universe couldn't come in. Someone else couldn't come in to actually do the supporting because she overgave. She over was over generous. And you know, that's a hard thing. You're like, you say you're like, well, what are you just supposed to leave someone in a lurch? No, I didn't say leave someone in a lurch. I said you we do our part. We don't over and if the resources aren't there, maybe for her would have been, you know, part money and part um just really giving the emotional support. And then someone else would have stepped in. But when you fill that gap, that that gap no, there's no room for any, any of the universe to send anyone else in there. And sometimes it's because of our personality, our own ego, right, is, is tied up into being a good person and being a helper or being a, a saver. And then that person, in this case of my friend, she ended up, she did end up getting remarried to a very, very, very wealthy person. And my friend still didn't get her money back. Let me take a sip of coffee. And that was a lesson for my friend, an overgiving to the point of her, um, her own deficit. I have, um, I have seen this with um, team leaders and people, you know, just within an organization where there's a, a need on another team and they, they, you know, they either give the resource part time or they give one of their, their team members um, over and then they have this gap now in their team that they can't backfill and that they can't. And so now they have to, they have to scrape for themselves. And when I'm working with somebody, you know, it's like these patterns are so deep, these overs, we're going to talk about the overs next. Um, but when we have language for, for that, you know, it's like, oh, there's me over compensating or there's me over extending. Then all of a sudden, like in this case, you know, we caught that with, with one of my clients of like, I'm like, look, this is, this is the overgiving you. If you keep doing this, you are going to put yourself into a deficit enough. Like you can't, you cannot fill the gaps for the entire, <laughs> for the entire, for the entire department anymore in this. You've given your part and maybe a little bit more. And so I know, you know, for myself, I love to be a generous person. It's like, it's, it's just, I love to be generous. Who doesn't love to be generous? But there are times in my life where I don't actually have it to give. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a single mother and has a really challenging husband or ex person and working, she's an accountant. So she's working really, you know, challenging hours right now. And I reached out to her for some support and she's like, I just don't have it to give right now. And I was like, okay. I texted her back, no problem. Like, I love you. You know, call me when you're on the other side. And she ended up calling me, um, texting me actually. She said, you know what? I'm going to go for a walk. Can you talk now? And so we did. And I really listened to her and I held space for her because I had, I had that to give to her. And then there was a couple things that she was able then, she kind of lifted up her spirit to, to give me some support on. And, and so it's like, that's how it, by her saying that and then me meeting her with love and generosity instead of some of, apparently some of her other friends got really mad at her because she's so busy and she doesn't have time. And there's that too. And that certainly happens. And I have friends like that. But then I also reset my expectations of who people choose to be. That's a whole other podcast. So just take a moment for, for a moment here and just tune in. You know, where might you be giving more than you can afford? And sometimes I think we feel ashamed about that. 
You know, it's like, well, I should be able to. I wish I had more money. I wish I had more time and I just can't. Um, or even, you know, I think of a project when Over Woman Over at the book came out, I was working with overextending. And every year I pick and we pick in the feminine wisdom way. And I want whoever I'm working with and coaching, we always pick an over to work with for the whole year. So we can start to see it and see how it's woven in all the different facets of our lives and then start to make change. And we'll do this. I I usually do this on International Women's Day um, as well, but it's for all people. Uh, Rebalancing at Equinox. So mine that year was purposely overextending. And overextending is about basically spending more resources, time, energy, mind share, et cetera, than you have to give. And I did it with my book when Over Women Over It came out because it's so easy to, to overextend. I can tell you the number of people that I know who are authors who went into debt for their books. I've gone into debt um, for my first book um, and actually probably my second book. There were also investments. You know, there was investments too, but there was a point where the investment went from sound investment into trying to like, you know, get something to happen because the ecosystem of the publishing industry is like that. And there's these deep needs, these deep desires we have in ourselves. And all of a sudden that we're giving more than we can afford and it's going to show up somewhere, you know, or I, the number of people I know that have released books or had big projects and they just fall, you know, they just fall into like sickness and unwell being. And, and so that overextending part by, by watching it and seeing it, I was able to, in the moment, see, oh, I'm pushing here. And I made choices about websites and PR and all these things by being in alignment and asking, like, well, what's actually in harmony? And what can I I afford? And that kept me from going into any kind of debt when that book came out. Of course, unfortunately, it came out during the pandemic. But the good news is it's full of wisdom. And so there's so much here for us to continue to work with. Um, And so that's where we're going to go next is I'm going to just share with you the the 13 overs. These are the ways that we can um, identify and you to start to play with them. And then also then we'll tie this all up in a bow and send you off until we come back next time. But before we do that, just a couple things. One, I am going to be doing the annual burnout to balance practice, which is a 40 day practice that literally helps you focus on an over. And you go through these 40 days and it 40 days is what it takes to break a habit or a pattern. And when you can see it, then you start to shift it. And I've done this practice now in different ways since 2013. And I always come out with like an illumination that makes a, um, a simple but significant shift um, within, within me because I can see where I'm overgiving and, and under receiving and where, where it comes from, like where the deeper root is in there of like, um, I remember when I, the second year I did the practice, we're like in day 30 of the practice and I was at a, on a trip in Canada and I was um, kind of half working, half hanging out and I was doing my morning practice. We always, we do the same morning practice every, every day for these 40 days. And after I finished the practice and I got silent, I just, it dropped in. This is how wisdom drops in and just drops in. And I just heard, cause I'm auditory, my intuition's auditory. I just heard if I'm not survive, if I'm not striving, then I'm not surviving. And I didn't just hear it. I also felt it in my body. I'm also kinesthetic. It's another one of the six channels of intuition. And I was just, it just dropped in like, I'm like, oh my God, if I'm not driving, if I'm not striving and driving, then I'm not surviving. There's an imprint that's causing me to overwork and over effort and overextend. Like overextend is a big one for me. And now I had an imprint that I could see that, Went all the way back to my childhood. Like I, that imprint served me for a time when I grew up in the South side of Chicago and I'm, I'm looking right now, I'm sitting in my studio and I'm looking at these pictures. I have one for me when I graduated from Kellogg with my, with my MBA, I'm me kind of walking in my cap and gown. And then I have one of uh, Noah uh, like picking me up and holding me. Um, and it's super cute and fun. And I, and I put those up there to remind me of, um, I needed those imprints. You know, I, if I didn't have that imprint to strive and drive, 
none of my rest of my family didn't go to college and most you know two of my best friends were pregnant by when they were teenagers like there's <laughs> sometimes Noah's like where did you grow up at there was a lot of um there's a lot of you know self reliance like we talked about last time that was needed but what happens with these imprints that at some point they serve us and then they don't anymore and so if you don't know what those deeper roots are like those imprints if you can't see them you don't have language for them they are subconsciously driving you in ways that you can't even see that are causing you to not have balance in your relationships, to have balance in your you know, work relationships, in work, in money, like all of the parts in all of the places. But when you can see it, now you can work with it. So as soon as that, that happened, then I could start to see it in different places. And that's where you know, it takes 120 days to put a new, just to start to reroute a new pattern. Um, but I had a place to focus. And then I had all the receiving practices, which is part of what's going on. It's like, oh, I need to, I need to, I need to really become a better receiver. And if, I, if it's not about striving and driving, what would be a different way to operate? And what do those parts in me that are not just mental, but remember it's mind, body, heart, and spirit that those imprints get stuck in. They're somatic, they're, they're remembrances that are emotional within us. And so that's part of, that's part of, that's part of the process. And um, once we start to break through them, we start to trust. We can do it differently. And so just, you know, even, you know, sensing into that a little bit, you know, for yourself and starting to get curious about that, thinking of a, um, one of the, a woman that I do leadership coaching with who is Asian, we're working with the overs and the Enneagram for her. We found an imprint that was cultural around a cultural belief. I can't remember exactly what it was called in this moment, but it, it is a cultural belief that is around like, if you give to someone else, you now you owe them. There's a debt to them. And so if you receive, if you receive from someone else, if if someone gives you something, whether it's help or money or, you know, whatever, now you're in debt to them. And it wasn't until we started poking around in there using the Enneagram and using the overs that she's like, oh my God. And she said the name of what it is. And that was like, that's how she grew up imprinted. And so these things are cultural, they're generational. Sometimes they're our own. Sometimes they're situational, you know, that they, that they, that they, um, that they happened, something happened, you know, to us. But sometimes they're just because we're swimming in the water. And then, you know, you take the striving and driving thing and you put me into corporate America and into a very, in the business world, you know, there are sharks, <laughs> there are sharks out there. I'm not a shark, I'm an orca. But I was like, a, you know, I was, oh, I was still like a baby orca back then. I didn't totally, <laughs> I was more like a petulant teenage orca um, who uh, thrashed around, <laughs> thrashed around a lot. Um, much more uh, mature <laughs> now, 20 years later. So, you know, lighten up a little bit and smile about these things because we got to have some lightness around this. But all to say, come and do the 40-day practice with us. Which I'm, I'm dedicating the rest of this year to from burnout to balance to brilliance because you can't get to brilliance if you don't get to balance first. And so we're going to go on a 40-day adventure and find those imprints and then really strengthen your receiving. And so that... We'll be, um, we opened that sometime in March. And so you can find out more about that. Um, I think it's like from, from burnout, burnout to balance practice.com and make sure you're on my uh, newsletter list or my wisdom letter list. And I'll send you a, um, I'll send you a, I'll send you an invite. How does that sound? When we when we open up enrollment for that, usually it starts at the beginning of April. All right. So last part here. If you have your book, page 134, um, you'll want to open it up because that's where the overgiving imprints are. If you don't have the book, go get a copy because <laughs> we're going to be using it um, and you can get it anywhere. And I also will put into the show notes a quiz that you can take that that actually takes you through so you can kind of rank these 13 overs. But today I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you to, um, the I'm going to ask you to just kind of set everything down, or if you're listening to this while you're driving or working, just kind of let everything kind of go. And just, we're going to open up, um, kind of open up the deeper wisdom within you around, you know, which over might it serve you this year 
to to take a deeper look at of like what's at the root of this so that I can stop just hacking back the you know the brush up on top but I could really pull this root ball out so that I can you know either shake it off and replant it or I can throw it away and compost it and put something new in and I'm just going to walk us through these 13 overs All right, you can close your eyes if you want or keep them open. So which one of these feels like, hmm, that might be one that I would love to transform this year. Number one, over caretaking. You over empathize with and caretake others. You feel, take on and carry other people's stuff, worries, concerns, needs, and life or work challenges. You take over responsibility for people, projects, organizations, issues, or the world. Two, overcompensating. You feel the gaps or the needs with a project, an organization, or family member, and then fill them in or fulfill them with your own life force, money, or time. You make up for what other people can't, don't, or won't show up for. Number three, overconnecting. You spend a lot of energy and time connecting with others at home, or work, online, at networking events, and more, but you leave little space for connection with yourself. You spend too much energy and time out and not enough in. Four, over-controlling. You plan, strategize, and organize, leaving nothing to chance. You allow no space for others to step in or lead. You over-control how things work and flow. Five, overdoing, you rarely stop moving. Resting makes you anxious. You're perpetually busy. You find it hard to do things that are not productive just for pleasure. You go to sleep and wake up with your to-do list. Six, over-efforting. You work harder and longer than is needed, giving 110% when 80% would do. You believe hard work is what makes you successful or valuable, so you work harder than others, giving everything your all. Seven, overextending. You give and spend and invest more time, energy than you have. You stretch yourself to the point of stressing and depleting yourself. You don't have the resources and time that you need because you've given them to others or spent beyond your capacity. Eight, overfocusing on the future. You obsessively think about what could or will happen. You get so focused on the goal, the outcome, the plan that you pressure yourself to keep moving until you get there. And you waste your life force and all the anxiety or frustration you feel about the future. And you don't receive or savor the joy of the present in the process. Nine, overindulging. You eat, drink, spend, or binge watch television more than is healthy to compensate for the lack of nourishment, support, love, and care you receive. In the moment, it feels good or numbs you out, but you end up with a physical, emotional, or financial hangover. Last four, over-perfecting. You put too much time, energy, and effort into make something an A- minus when a B would do. You pay attention to details that no one else sees, wasting little life force for return, or you procrastinate about completing things, trying to perfect what no one else cares about. Eleven, over-promising. You say or impulsively blurt out, yes, I can, when you know that you can't, or before you've even paused to consider what you can do, what's being asked. 12, overprotecting, you learn to protect yourself so much that you can't receive the love and attention and care that you need. So you block physical affection and support and intimate connection, or you waste energy chasing relationships that are not fulfilling or supportive. And lastly, overworking, you give so much to your work that your relationships, health and happiness suffer. Tell yourself that one day you'll have the time for fun and love and pleasure, which never happens because there's always more work to do. So which of those really kind of rang true? They all probably, you know, have some level of truth in them for you. But asking like, huh, overtake, over caretaking, over compensating, over connecting, over controlling, over doing, over efforting, over extending, over focusing on the future overindulging, overperfecting, overpromising, overprotecting, and overworking, 
which of these are like, hmm, I want to explore those and start to take a look at those. And then you, know, you can go to amiovergiving.com. That is where the, the quiz is at, and you can do it online and get them ranked. Um, and then come to Burnout to Balance, and let's work it. <laughs> let's work it. Let's work it together. Um, it is, you know, when I, think of, when I think of what's possible when we actually, it, you know, it's so simple. It seems so simple. Like, this is a, makes me kind of crazy sometimes with the work I do because, Everyone wants these complicated processes or they want, you know, the, the next app or the next this, you know, and then that's going to figure it all out. And these processes, like if you pick one over and you work with that for the whole year, you will start to see things that you can't see right now. When you're blind, you can't change what you're blind to. You, only when you gain language for something and you start to see it, can you actually make shifts, even know where to focus. So when you take that into your heart and you get curious about like, what is at the root? What is at the root of this? And you start to see it, you're going to start to see the fears of there's not enough, or someone else won't have enough. There's a whole list of these fears in overwhelmed and over it that we want to get into and like look in there. And, you know, part of the you know reason like, like why I chose overextending with my book was that there was a fear, like if I if I don't spend this money, if I don't do all the things I'm supposed to do, like my book isn't going to get out there. People aren't going to see it, and I might have spent all this energy, all this time, and people won't receive this. So I have to keep spending more time and more energy, <coughs> more, 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 more. See, it's like making me cough, <laughs> choking me. Right, right. That more thing that's under there. And this is why we use the equation, for those of you who are new here, you won't know this yet, but this is why one of the equations for a sustainable success in well-being is do more or do less, receive more, achieve a greater impact. So I took that equation with me, which is a 100% receiving and giving in harmony into all the decisions I made that year. And I've never stopped using that equation. If you missed that, you want to write that down do less, receive more, achieve a greater impact. It's an equation that we created in one of my leadership councils that we've been working on with since like 2017. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's, I think, where we're going to end today. I, um, I want to say two other pieces that this last part is like, you know, what do we do with all this? Well, first is awareness. And then second, we start to rewrite the equation. You know, you look at the people, you look at the projects, you look at your passion and your purpose and you use these equations, I do less, receive more, achieve a greater impact. You get into like what really matters to me in there, you know, like what's true for me and where might I be over giving and not getting what I need because I'm trying to, you know, save someone or I'm trying to, you know, like make something happen. And, you know, it's hard to look at these places because our ego and personality is all up and invested <laughs> in this stuff. And this is where we have to be able to be honest. But we also have these crazy, you know, fears that have been imprinted into us in this crazy banana world. And that's part of what we're all doing right now. You know, if you're awake and aware and embracing your power, it's like, look, I don't want these cultural imprints inside of me. Like the scarcity, lack, isolation, bullshit, like uh, out, you know, get it out of my system. And that's what the people who are reimagining the world are doing. That's what we're up to. We're like, okay, like, where's that stuff in our system? Let's remove it. Let's transmute it. And then let's get on with creating our families, our relationships, our, our society, whatever your part is, which we'll talk about next time we gather here for this podcast, is like, then you can do that with a clear conscience and a clear mind, and you're aligned to your design. And then what you create has embedded in that, whether it's a job within a company or it's your own entrepreneurial venture or it's a relationship or a family or a collaboration, then it's coming from that higher elevated vibrational frequency. And this is as real as like tomatoes growing on a vine. <laughs> this is as real as any scientific study about whatever. Like this is what those who understand wisdom have known forever. And if you are new to some of this language, awesome. I was too. I grew up in Chicago. When, pe when my therapist started talking to me about energy, uh, I was like, you mean like from the socket? Um, I didn't know what I didn't know. But as I, as I started to learn, all of this wisdom opened up. And for those of you who had a biv on a wisdom path, 
for some time and really embracing your personal leadership and empowerment. Like, great, like that, let's do this together. It is an intense time right now and it's just been ratcheting up and ratcheting up and we we need our practices and we need each other and we need containers that hold us as we transform and elevate ourselves. And so that's why I'm here. This is why Feminine Power Time is here. This is why I'm doing the 40-day Burnout to Balance practice. Again, I'm excited about it for myself. And there's some other things that are coming up. I'm still sitting with some things around making sure I'm, you know, looking at my overgiving or things I want to do and what might need to, you know, shape shift, stop, start, and shift. Even this podcast, um, you know, this will be going into our ninth year in April. And I'm curious, and I'll be, you know, sending out a survey to all of you, you know, is this, are we complete with feminine power time? And is, you know, is it time to stop? Um, And is it time, or is there something else to start that would, that, you know, is there something else to start? Or is there a shift that's needed? Um, And so I'm deeply sitting with that, sitting with that myself. And this is where we use the moon cycles to contemplate things. This is where we go to council to contemplate things. You are all part of this community, even if we've never met in person. Um, I always say that this is a podcast, but it's just the format. For me, it's been a place to come and tune into what matters, stay harmonized, stay centered. Because when you are a more compassionate, courageous, and confident, when you are more compassionate, courageous, and confident, that happens because our giving and receiving is in harmony. People often come to me and say they want presence. Well, this is, you know, you, you can't have presence if these equations are off. It's, it just rocks you on the inside. And so I invite you into the exploration with me. I will look forward to, um, to hearing from you when I send out the survey. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to those of you who have uh, to uh, HS in the Pacific Northwest. And it is Chat, Chat, Chat Oisa. Chat Oisa, I'm sorry if I can't spell that, say that correctly, who posted on the 18th of February, right after my birthday, um, to um, re- reviews on the podcast. So thank you for that. That that helps a lot. There hadn't been any, I don't know why, any reviews for some time. So if you haven't yet left a review for Feminine Power Time, I would so appreciate it. All you need to do is go to the show on your app, the full show, and scroll down, and you'll see stars on the bottom. And then you can also write a review. So, you know, write a review and what this means for you and why you, uh, you know, keep coming back. Short is great. Um, and if that's not your jam, please share this podcast with one other person. That is how we work in the feminine as we share and um, and invite them to, you know, t- with you to explore these overs and t- support each other to do it differently. I just had a great conversation with my friend Jory a couple days ago who gave me permission to, you know, put pause on some things that I'm like, oh, I can pause that. That's kind of scary. <laughs> She's like, Christine, people do it all the time um, because I feel I have a responsibility and I have a desire. And so, you know, more on that, but it's important to have people with us that can reflect for us and help us give ourselves permission and see for us when we can't see it um, for ourselves. So with that, my dear ones, I am sending you all off with lots of love and know that um, there's nothing wrong. There is just this opportunity to pull your energy in and embrace your power to stay centered and sustained in a chaotic world and reimagine the way we and the world work from the inside out. Thank you for being a beautiful presence on the planet. See you soon.